Welcome back Defenders, Jake here. We're going to start today's video by following up on the story of Don Boss Davushka. If you don't know who this woman is, go check out my update video from two days ago in which I explain her story in detail. But this is important because they're talking about this woman inside Ukraine. This is the Kyiv Post, pro-Russian propagandist, revealed as former U.S. servicewoman Sarah Bills. So Sarah Bills, while serving on active duty in the United States Navy, was pretending to be a Russian Jew from the occupied city of Luhansk. Her Twitter, Telegram, and YouTube channels have been broadcasting Kremlin propaganda for months and raising money for the Russian cause through the sale of merchandise. Known by a number of pseudonyms, she had secured over 130,000 subscribers to her podcasts, which were broadcast in English while using what is described as a faintly Russian accent. And I've got sad news, guys. Sarah Bills on Twitter decided to block me. Apparently, she didn't like my last video about her. And the number one question I was getting in the comments section is, is she in trouble? So I wanted to follow up on that. The FBI interviews Sarah Bills, the Donbass Davushka, as the Department of Justice and NCIS probes her past. So NCIS is the Naval Criminal Investigative Service. Uh, and let's just read the first paragraph. Former U.S. Navy Chief Petty Officer Sarah Bills better known as the Russian propagandist Don Bas Davushka, was interviewed by FBI agents at her Oak Harbor, Washington home on Sunday, according to Newsmax, and is also under investigation by NCIS. So I, I do think she's in trouble for numerous reasons. I'm sure a woman as crazy as this at the very least they can get her for tax evasion. I, I doubt she was declaring as income all the money she was stealing from these people who thought they were donating money to a woman in the Donbass region. She also partnered, I guess, with uh, some Russian companies for merchandise, and yeah, while serving on active duty, that's a no-no. And I also want to clarify that I'm not doxing her. She willingly admitted who she was because she's crazy. <laughs> so she said on Twitter, if I dox myself, they can't dox me. So here I am in all my glory. When the Wall Street Journal called her, she talked to them. She willingly gave an interview. This woman is not very smart. She continuously keeps talking, keeps lying, because she can't help herself. The smartest thing this woman could do is to stop talking and just go away and hope nobody investigates her. But she likes the attention. Ultimately, I think that's what this is all about. I don't think she actually believes in Russia or supports Russia. She just likes the attention she was getting from Z supporters on the internet. And ultimately, what caught her, how NAFO pieced it together was she participated in podcasts about tropical fish. I'll link this video down below. It's an hour-long podcast in which she's promoting her tropical fish business, Cascadia Aquatics. <laughs> and I even found a Cascadia Aquatics unboxing video on YouTube, and there it is, Sarah Bill's Cascadia Aquatics. Now, Sarah Bills did uh, shut down her store on Shopify. She deleted her account on Twitter, deleted her account on Instagram. But Sarah, everything on the internet is forever. There's a website, Internet Archive Wayback Machine, and I can go back in time and see what her fish store website looked like in February of 2022. If I scroll to the bottom, Sure enough, it says she's based in Whidbey Island, Washington, where she was stationed while serving in the United States Navy. And this website, guys, 
This is from February 25th of 2022. So what happened was, as a side hustle, she was selling fish food uh, to tropical pet enthusiasts. And when Russia invaded Ukraine, she just decided she didn't want to do this anymore. And she went all in on being a Russian propagandist in order to scam people for money. That's insane. And over the last year, she's recorded dozens of podcasts with all of the biggest propagandists uh, for Russia on, on social media. Gonzo Lira, Scott Ritter numerous times, Jimmy Dore, the guys from the Duran. And in all of these podcasts, she was using a fake, a really bad fake Russian accent. So what is a good Russian accent sound like? And let's go to the ultimate authority on this, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Hey guys, I tried to show a copyrighted clip from the cartoon Rocky and Bullwinkle and YouTube said no, so link to the video is down below. How will we catch Moose and Squirrel? She really should have sounded like this. That would have made all of her podcasts ten times better. But here's the truth. Sarah Bills is from New Jersey, and I keep mentioning this, but I don't think my audience uh, who lives outside of America, I don't think my non-American audience understands what that means to be from New Jersey. So let me share with you a clip uh, from the MTV reality TV show, Jersey Shore. This is what Americans from New Jersey look and sound like. Hello once again. I tried showing a copyrighted clip of Jersey Shore and YouTube was not having it, so link once again will be down below if you want to experience Jersey Shore. So in the United States, when we say someone is from New Jersey, we think of this show, Jersey Shore. And these are harmful stereotypes. This is unfair to think of American citizens from New Jersey as being similar to these people. Uh, some of the cast members are actually from Staten Island and Queens, but this is the stereotype that people think of when they think of New Jersey. So here are the cast members, Jay Wow and Angelina. This show, Jersey Shore, has been on air for over 10 years. And here's Sarah Bills from New Jersey. She kind of looks like Jay Wow and Angelina. None of these women are Jewish. None of these women have any Eastern European heritage. Many people in, in New Jersey and Staten Island claim Italian-American heritage. So why the heck does Sarah Bills want to be, one, Jewish, and two, Russian? And it was just a fantasy. It was just a scam. Okay, since we're on the topic of bad accents, the Russian Ministry of Defense put out this intercepted radio broadcast and claimed this was evidence there are American soldiers fighting on the front lines in Ukraine because they're speaking English. But just just listen to these terrible English accents. Where are striking from? Give me the coordinates immediately. Can you hear me? Guys under attack. What's the coordinates? Have you been given the coordinates? What are you doing there? Damn it! I have only conditional ones. This brand is retired. Give the wrong coordinates. They can't fucking determine it without us. Guys are fucking dying. Have been showing us for several hours. Guys are dying. We can't evacuate them. It's just fucked up. We don't even shoot back. Tell me coordinates. Right down. Four seven point. Three six one eight six one three thirty four point seven six three seven two four eight. I repeat, it's not them. Who the hell knows? Let's check. Ukrainians can't fucking do anything. They would have died long ago without us. So, what do you guys think? Does that sound like a guy from Boston talking to a guy from Texas? Ah, oh, jeez. All right, let's move on. And when we check in with the front lines, the city of Bakhmut, 
sort of still continues to hold. Russia cannot capture 100% of the city, and the objective for Ukraine is once again to just stall, buy for time. They're trying to just slowly withdraw from the city in order to distract the Russians. Uh, Ukraine's spring counteroffensive is coming within the next month, and it's not happening in this area. So Russia, on Kremlin State TV, continues to elevate and talk up the Ukrainian military. I've been mentioning this on my channel, but let me share with you yet another clip. And here's Olga asking this uh, war reporter, do you think that you, the Ukrainian military is on its last leg? Is it about to collapse? No, no feeling that the Ukrainian army is on its last breath. No feeling that there are problems with weapons, problems with weapons, or with weapons, or with weapons, or you know, what is called the desired, I'm trying to get it. No, I don't have that feeling that it's on its last breath. But there are still people, 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 there are still people. So when Russian propagandists like Scott Ritter say that Ukrainian casualties are 7 to 1, and the Ukrainian military is about to collapse. That's not even what they're saying on Kremlin State TV. There is no feeling that the Ukrainian army is on its last legs. They still have people, Western support, no feeling that they have been weakened or relieved the pressure. So what they're doing is, is they're trying to prepare the Russian people, prepare their audience for failure this spring. They want expectations for Ukraine's counteroffensive to be as high as possible and Russia's defense of it to be as low as possible. So when Russia gets their ass kicked, nobody's surprised and they'll keep supporting the war. And what Russia needs the most right now is more bodies. Their soldiers perform terribly, they fight terribly. Russia's biggest advantage throughout history has been their size, their numbers. So Russian social media currently is being flooded with army recruitment ads. And I want to share two of them with you. The first one's pretty normal. This is a recruitment piece, uh, I guess, during like a local morning broadcast. And this is a Russian soldier trying to convince people to join the Russian military. В рядах участников спецоперации много тех, кто выбрал военную службу по контракту. Принимая решение, человек осознает, как связаны с ним тяготы, лишения, опасности, так и стимулы со стороны государства для самого себя и для своей семьи. Больше информации для этого по короткому телефонному номеру 117 или по QR-коду. Ссылки на сайт, где перечислены пять шагов к началу контрактной службы. Я обращаюсь ко всем достойным мужчинам нашей большой-большой страны. Я приглашаю на контрактную службу в вооруженных силах Российской Федерации. Здесь вы сможете обрести себя как настоящие мужики, найти достойную зарплату, реализовать все свои мечты и желания, которые у вас были в детстве. Жду вас. So Putin recently stated that he wanted to expand the size of the Russian army by 400,000 volunteer contract soldiers. They're not talking about mobilized men or conscripts. They want somehow to get 400,000 Russian men to voluntarily sign up with the Russian army. So this is a this is a pretty tame recruitment piece. This isn't going to convince anyone, but it makes sense. But look at this insane clip they're running on social media to convince people to join the Russian military. <laughs> That is some insane production quality for a recruitment video. You're a man, be one. Wow. 
But in reality, on social media, anyone contemplating joining the Russian army, they're going to be inundated with these viral videos of Russian soldiers currently serving in Ukraine complaining about literally everything. It's a nightmare to be a Russian soldier currently in Ukraine. So let me share with you a recent clip from Dmitry over at War Translated. This is a, a Russian soldier from this month telling it how it really is on the front lines in Ukraine. 2 April 2023. My husband is a Kazakh. Maybe after this video, he will get a gun. He will get a gun. He will not get a gun. He will not get a gun. He will not get a gun. Сейчас мы получили по соплям. По нам работало стрелковое оружие, АГСы, минометы. Мы забились в норы, как мыши, и не вылазили оттуда, пока все это не закончилось. Благо, не было прямых попаданий, поэтому все шестеро из нас живы и здоровы. Хвала Всевышнему. Нам не платят суточных и боевых. Потому что якобы мы не штурмуем. Да, мы не штурмуем, но находимся на передке. Хотя находиться здесь не должны, а должны находиться. So this is one of the more tamer videos that I can show you of Russian soldiers explaining how bad conditions are for them on the front lines. Everybody is being lied to by their commanders and leadership. Nobody has the support they think they should have. Nobody is experiencing any kind of success in Vuladar and Divka and Bakhmut. Uh, this guy simply says, I have no more strength to tolerate any of this. And if you're a, a female, you definitely don't want to be serving in the Russian military. Russian female soldiers are reportedly being subjected to sexual abuse and violence by male soldiers, and being pressured into becoming field wives of officers, according to a report by Radio Free Europe. Women being abused in Russia? I'm shocked. An RFE has published an account of a 42-year-old female soldier named Margarita, who has been undergoing psychiatric treatments in Russia after her time in Ukraine. She served as a medic. She is one of 40,000 women serving in the Russian armed forces, including 4,000 female officers. That co corresponds to only 4% of Russian forces, less than 1% of their officer corps. This is a far lower ratio than other militaries around the world, and most of these women only work in medical roles. Let's get to the good news uh, for Ukraine. The United States has announced its next $325 million security assistance package for Ukraine. In the package, it's the usual stuff, such as HIMARS ammunition, 155 and 105 millimeter artillery rounds, tow missiles for the Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicles, as well as over 9 million rounds of small arms ammunition. Wow. More good news, Ukraine has officially received its first Patriot missile system from Germany. As promised in January, Germany has delivered one unit of the sophisticated surface-to-air missile system to Ukraine, just in time for the spring offensive. So one unit is many trucks and vehicles in a battery for the Patriot system. Uh, Ukrainian soldiers went to Oklahoma in the United States to be trained on it. They're now, they've now returned to Ukraine just in time to take over this system from Germany, just in time for Ukraine's spring counteroffensive, so Russia can't have air superiority uh, in the area where they're going to be pushing. More good news, the Leopard 2A4 tanks promised from Spain were spotted on the highway traveling east. Um, I guess they'll be in Ukraine probably within a couple days. 
Here is a cool picture. This is a British Challenger 2 tank that was repainted with uh, pixel camouflage. So, you know, they, they show up in these sand colors, but uh, they're all being repainted for Ukraine's terrain. Here's a cool photo. Uh, these, this is a Bradley infantry fighting vehicle right here, and this is a Ukrainian defender taking a photo out the back of another Bradley. The United States sent 109 of these, and I do think they're going to do a lot of damage once they start pressing on Russian trench positions. We've got UFO news. This is always exciting. Uh, but apparently there was a burst and a bright light in the sky. This occurred uh, last night or two nights ago. And speculation, there's always a concern this is a, a Russian missile or... There was even a rumor this was a NASA satellite falling out of space. But in reality, it's probably just a small meteorite entering the Earth's atmosphere and burning up. There wasn't any serious damage or destruction. But online, you got to have fun whenever it comes to UFOs. This was spotted somewhere in Kiev, and what the heck is that? <laughs> in addition, there's just your... Your generic uh, UFO uh, fun stuff. Final couple feel-good clips. The first one is of Ukrainian defenders uh, being distracted while trying to do some training. <laughs> Literally everything is made better by puppies. Final clip I have for you is a Ukrainian defender, a former paratrooper, proposing to his girlfriend. That's all for this update video. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support the channel. Comments and questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, keep defending the truth, keep defending democracy.